Hi, I'm Sydney from Simply Equine, and welcome to the fourth video of a multiple part series regarding horse coat colors. In this video, I'll teach you the basics of horse color genetics by focusing specifically on the white markings and Appaloosa coat colors. But before we go any further, the Simply Equine YouTube channel is a channel dedicated to making horse-related educational content. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, as in the next video we'll be going over some more markings, as well as combinations of genes. For the sake of organization, this video will be broken down into certain fundamental pieces that will be timestamped in the description below. The first myth that this video will bust is that Appaloosa slash varnish roan horses are the same thing as roan horses. In actuality, a roan horse has the roan gene versus a Appaloosa roan or varnish roan doesn't have the roan gene. Instead, they have the Appaloosa gene, which we'll mention later in the video. The second myth is that a white horse is the same as a gray horse because they look very similar. White horses are so rare that the horse that you're looking at is most likely a gray horse. A white horse and a gray horse are definitely not the same thing. A white horse has pink skin and a gray horse has black skin. First up we have dominant white. This refers to a class of white marking genes in which a horse with at least one copy will display markings on 50% to 100% of its body. This causes variable white coat patterning, which ranges from an extensive white face and leg marking to an all-white horse. The horse will also have pink skin. We'll leave dominant white at, as is, and we won't go too much into the details of each gene. Next, we have Sabino, which is an incomplete dominant gene, meaning that depending on the amount of genes the horse has, it'll have a different physical appearance. It's related to dominant white, but they have a complex relationship that'll be for another video. Sabino causes a white spotting pattern, which is usually on the legs, belly, and face. Similar to Roan, it'll also cause a lot of white hairs to be mixed in with the coat color. The color will often extend up the legs of a horse to its belly in an irregular or fragmented fashion. A horse that is heterozygous for Sabino will have two or more white feet or legs. This can be very minimal, while a homozygous Sabino horse will be at least 90% white. For the rest of this video, we're going to be talking about Appaloosa markings. First, we have to look at the leopard complex. This refers to a group of genetically related incomplete dominant coat color patterns. Leopard complex is indicated by LP. The LP gene works with multiple patterning modifier genes indicated by PATN for short. The PATN gene determines whether or not the horse will have a white spotting pattern, whereas the LP gene determines the intensity of this white spotting pattern. Think of the LP gene as a light switch. At least one copy of the LP gene switches on the Appaloosa characteristics. Appaloosa characteristics include a mottled coat and skin, white sclera, lack of pigmentation around the hooves, and progressive distribution of white hairs throughout the coat. This is known as Appaloosa or Varnish Roan. But this is not to be confused with the Roan gene, as these are completely different. A horse is Varnish Roan if it has LP without the PATN gene, which causes the signature large spots. Moreover, if a horse happens to have the PATN modifier and the switch is on, meaning they have the LP gene, they will show these PATN markings. However, if the switch is off, meaning they don't have the LP gene, they will not show these PATN markings, even if they carry them. I know that's a lot to take in, but to recap, a horse with the LP gene only will have Appaloosa characteristics. A horse with the LP and PATN gene will have Appaloosa characteristics and coat patterns. And a horse with only the PATN genes will not have any characteristic or coat patterns. PATN1 is the most common and widely known pattern modifier. In combination with the LP gene, it produces leopard, semi-leopard, leopard slash spotted blanket, snow cap, and few spot. Remember, LP controls the intensity of this modifier. A horse that is heterozygous for LP and has the PATN gene will be leopard Appaloosa to blanket slash spotted blanket. A horse that is homozygous for LP and also has the PATN modifier will be snow cap Appaloosa or few spot. Without PATN1, a horse is solid or varnish roan. 
I annotated this picture to provide a better visual representation of how the LP and PATN1 genes work together. The horse on the top left is considered a leopard Appaloosa. That horse is heterozygous for LP and also has the PATM1 gene. The horse on the top right is a spotted blanket or leopard blanket horse and is heterozygous for LP and also has the PATN1 gene. The horse on the bottom left is called Fuspa Appaloosa. This means that the horse is homozygous for LP and has PATN1. The horse on the bottom right is a snowcap Appaloosa. This means that it is homozygous for LP and has PATN1. As you can see, PATN is what causes the white markings, but LP changes the intensity as those in the top row are heterozygous and those in the bottom row are homozygous. You can use the rest of the video to quiz yourself on what you learned. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below.